there was a proposal for Texas to start an eradication program for boll weevils. And this whole eradication idea was based on this raging debate in academia that goes back 30 or more years. And actually it goes back to a fight at A&M where integrated pest management was developed. And integrated pest management um, is a pest control technique and it developed <clears throat> really as an economic uh, tool to determine that level where the cost of ad the additional use of pesticides was um, exceeded by uh, the, the, let me phrase that a different way. It was to try to find the level of pesticide use that was optimum. You could accept a certain amount of pest damage um, and that if you used more pesticides, you know, you saved a little more crop, but you didn't save any more money because you were already producing as much as you needed to produce. And there were other ideas about, well, maybe if we rotated crops, we could break some of the pest cycle. Maybe if we did a couple of other mechanical things, we could lower the cost of pesticides because pesticides are fairly, you know, they can be very expensive. But the, the, the goal was not to improve environmental protection or to reduce pesticide use because it might harm people later. The goal was to reduce the farmer's cost of pesticide use. Who cares how you get there? That, that's, a, that's a good thing. So, but at the same time, so these, these practices were being developed at, at Texas A&M. But at the same time, there was this other philosophy called TPM, total pest management, only in academia. Can you have a war between these two philosophies? But the total pest management philosophy was that you could totally eliminate a pest and that you would have a, an increase in the cost of pest management temporarily while you were, and I mean, it's engaged in war on a species. And they felt that they knew enough about ecology and enough about the species that they figured that they could break the reproduction cycle in a specific species if they developed a tight enough and aggressive enough attack. And this idea kind of comes out of some of the disease control methods. And we really had eradicated a couple of diseases. You know, smallpox is gone. Now, well, if you don't count people creating it in laboratories so that they can fight other people with it, um, it's gone. And there are some other diseases that we had wiped out using this kind of an approach. Well, the difference there is that you're talking microorganisms and not insects and the variables uh, the higher the life form that you, that you uh, are dealing with, the more variables you have to deal with. So it's very hard to just on paper figure out, okay, if, if bow weevils have this kind of characteristics and have these types of behaviors, if we apply this pesticide at exactly the right time and we get everybody to do it all at the same time, like, you know, countdown, everybody spray right now, that we could kill an entire generation of them. So TPM is based on that idea. And in theory, it probably really would work. In practice, it's never worked before. And we had an experience in Texas earlier on, probably in the late 70s, early 80s, with a eradication program for fire ants, where that was the same idea. We're gonna nuke all the fire ants at the same time. And what they wound up doing was in spreading fire ants across the entire sp state <clears throat> and increasing the population exponentially. Well, the reason the fire ant eradication program didn't work was that they really didn't understand the biology of fire ants. And, you know, not, not to make the story too long, but the reason was that fire ants behave differently than any other kind of ant for the most part. Uh, most ants have one queen no more than two, and they're the, the reprodu they're, that's how they reproduce, the queen lays the eggs. And fire ants have multiple queens, up to three or four hundred queens per, per mound. If you disrupt a fire ant mound, uh, their response to that is to disperse their queens. 
and each queen can start a new colony. So when they tried the eradication program on fire ants, they disrupted every mound of fire ants in the state, and they wound up with like a 300-fold increase in the fire ant population, which put population pressure on the fire ants, so they had to spread out. So it was, you couldn't have created a bigger disaster. So with this experience <clears throat> and knowing how disastrous this approach could be, they wanted to launch the bow weevil eradication program. So uh, we got involved with this one as did a few other environmental groups. Uh, Texas Center for Policy Studies got involved, Sierra Club did. Uh, and our concern was this interim period of the eradication program involves increasing the use of pesticides. And the pesticide of choice was malathion, an organophosphate. And it's got relatively low mammalian toxicity. So from that perspective, maybe it's not the worst. I mean, there are far worse pesticides. It's a bad one, though. Um, but the, the reason that it was used, it's got pretty good knockdown power for a program like this where you're trying to really disrupt one generation. But the other advantage is that it's really, really cheap. So they were gonna you know, do aerial spraying, ground spraying, every kind of spraying, time when it was done. Uh, the law that got passed on that, we killed the first session that it was proposed. And we killed it on the basis of arguing the fire ant thing and arguing that uh, you know, this is just not a very well thought out program. There's no way you can eradicate them. You're going to increase pesticide use. And we also argued this was just based on theory. And it's we had found uh, uh, a treatise that was done by a professor years before that argued that if you tried to do this massive knockdown that you'd have this thing called secondary pest infestations. And what that basically meant was you're targeting your attack on the boll weevil. But when you go to kill the boll weevil, you're going to kill the predator insects that control all these other pests other than the boll weevil. And there are lots of different um, pests that typically never reach the stage that they cause big economic harm. Uh, and some people bought it, bought the argument, but most people didn't. They said, oh yeah, that's just science fiction. That's not going to really happen. Uh, but enough farmers bought that argument that half, about half of the ag community, the cotton producing community, opposed the, the bow weevil bill. Well, as it turned out, that wasn't why they opposed it at all. It was the assessment because the, the eradication program required that farmers pay into this assessment and it was a mandatory assessment. And you also, the state, Department of Ag or whoever contracted with them got the ability to enter onto their property to apply pesticides. And being the good libertarians that they are, a lot of these farmers thought, nah, -uh. you know, you're not going to have people entering my property without my permission, and I'm not paying another tax. So it was a very anti tax situation. Now, I had some concerns about trying to take advantage of, of that because the one part of the eradication program that I liked was the part where the ag community, as a community in a region, had to work together to develop a plan for pest control. Now, if you forget the eradication part of this, that we're gonna nuke an entire species out of existence, that's not a bad idea. Because a lot of what increases the cost of pest control is that everybody individually is doing pest control on their property without regard to what's happening on the property next to them. If you wanted to have a good integrated pest control management system, it wouldn't be designed just for Farmer Jones's plot. It would be designed for the entire Concho Valley area with a plan that knows what the migration of the pest is, what the population of pest predators might be so that you can if the predators are increasing their population because the pest population is high, you probably don't want to spray at that time. Or you want to use something that's specific to the pest and won't harm the predator because you'll get really good natural pest control. And maybe you've got a plant 
other things in those areas that encourage the, pet, the predator population to increase. So, I mean, it's a very intricate thing, but that there are some scientific answers to it that are good for everybody. So that was one aspect of the program that we liked. And so we got some amendments. The next time the bill was proposed, we got some amendments put in that actually turned out to have language that was totally contrary to an eradication program. We, had, we got put into the law that they had to use integrated pest management. And one of the guys, one of the scientists at, at uh, A&M says, this is ludicrous. This is a total pest management program. The total pest management and integrated pest management are totally opposite things. And yet you're going to put language in here that says you have to use integrated pest management. But w it flew. Uh, we got some protections for beekeepers put into the law. We let the beekeepers know that they were going to be doing indiscriminate spraying that was going to wipe out their livelihood. And... Uh, Representative Cruzy, who's the representative from um, Williamson County, who is one of the you know movers and shakers over there now, uh, sponsored an amendment into the bill to protect the beekeepers. Well, we were able to get the beekeeper provision written wide enough so that it protected other people, too. So there were a lot of opportunities in there. But the end of that story is that the bill passed. And it set up this whole program to eradicate the boll weevil, had some safeguards in there, some things that were pretty innovative safeguards. But uh, what happened the first year after the program was put into effect was this doomsday scenario that we had brought up about secondary pest infestations. It really happened. I mean, it was one of those instances where we, you know, they always accuse us of being chicken little that the sky was going to fall. And we had made this argument for something that almost was science fiction, but it really did happen. They did the sprays in the valley and in the San Angelo area, and they had the worst secondary pest infestation almost in history. It wiped out the cotton crop. It cost the farmers tons of money.